Hello, I'm Coach Natalie, and welcome to this episode of Jiu Jitsu for Dummies. Well, you're in for a treat. Today is our 50th episode, and I did promise you something fun. So today we're going to be doing a judo throw called Ogoshi, or hip toss. Um, it's usually one of the first uh, judo throws that we learn in Jiu Jitsu. Uh, better yet, it's easily done, especially when you uh, are shorter than your opponent. So. Let's check it out. Okay, let's break it down. You're going to be doing the Ogoshi, just like any other judo throw, when both of you are uh, standing on your feet. Now, I'm a left hand person, so my left foot's going to go forward with my left arm. I'm going to reach back and tramp their right arm just as far as I can. But obviously, if you're right handed, you know, you're going to reverse those directions. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go forward and overhook my partner here, grabbing just as far as I can. Next, I'm going to step backwards. Now that is going to pull my uh, uh, partner forward if they were a real human, that would off balance them. We call that kazushi. Next, I'm actually going to be pivoting. So now I'm at a 90 degrees for my uh, partner here. You can see that I'm, you know, grabbing onto their waist, grabbing onto their belt, if they had one, that kind of thing. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step further away. Now I'm looking directly away from my uh, a partner here. Now my hips should be between their hips and I'm bending down so that my belt is lower than their belt. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist my torso to the left, grabbing the arm, twisting my torso. I pull them over my hip, and that's where it gets its name, the hip toss. Let's try it again. Again, I'm going to be facing my a dummy. As a left-handed person, I'm reaching with my left hand, but obviously reverse that if you're a right-handed person. So, I'm going to go forward with my left foot, overhooking their right arm. I'm now going to pull back, pull back, which is going to, you know, pull their center of gravity forward. Well, that's going to off balance them. Next, I'm now going to, you know, be parallel to them. You can see that my hand is wrapped around their waist. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be loosening the arm slightly so I can actually be, you know, 100 degrees, 180 degrees away from them. Now, ideally, my hips should be between their two hips. My feet are together. And my, my belt is lower than their belt. Grabbing this arm, I'm gonna torque my you know torso to the left. And thus we get the name hip toss. So it's pretty simple, as I mentioned. It's one of the uh, couple of throws that are easily taught to beginners. We had another one a couple of weeks ago called a Sotogari. So I would just say the Agoshi hip toss and Osotogari are probably the two uh, most commonly uh, taught judo throws uh, in Jiu Jitsu. So there's a few mistakes that you can make. Um, 
whenever you're trying to move people, it's best when your body is very close to their body so that, you know, if you move, uh, they feel all of that movement. You're not dissipating that, uh, your momentum uh, because of distance. So when you first grab your arm, you want to grab it as far as you can. Then you want to further trap that arm uh, underneath your underarm. Um, another mistake would be that you want to have your hips right in front of their hips. Like I said, if you move, they should feel that movement. And when you're right in front of them, really, whatever you do, uh, it's going to affect them. And then, as I mentioned, you really want to have your belt, your hips, uh, lower than their hips. Now, if you're naturally a tall person, this may or may not be the move for you. If you're short, uh, then you don't even actually even probably have to bend that far. But whatever you do, you really want to make sure that your hips are lower than your uh, partner's hips. So let's try it again. Again, I'm going to go forward with my left foot, overhook the right arm with my left arm, and I'm going to be stepping backwards, stepping backwards, and that's really going to tip them forward. We call that kuzushi, which is off balancing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, so then I'm in a 90 degree angle from them. You can kind of see that my hand is under hooking their underarm and I'm grabbing onto their waist. Next, I'm gonna loosen this arm a little bit because now I'm gonna be 180 degrees from them. You can see my feet are together. My hips should be in between their hips and I'm bending my uh, knees so that my hips can be lower than their hips. Finally, with holding onto this arm, I'm gonna tweak my uh, twist my torso to the left and pulls them over my hip. Of course, if I'm holding on to this arm, you know, I can do an arm bar, you know, you can do a you know, belly, that kind of thing. So it's great uh, that we're learning a judo throw. If you've ever seen any uh, judo being studied, um, They've got uh, something called uh, uchikomi. Uchikomi is where you do the setup. You you know get ninety uh, percent through the throw. You don't actually throw your partner. It's the setup. You know maybe nine setups and, and the last one's actual takedown. Now I don't know if that's just to spare your poor partner from you know extra trips to the mat, but. Uh, the way that you learn judo in this way is it's really you're committing it to muscle memory. And that's a really good way to learn uh, martial arts, judo, judo, -jitsu, judo, that kind of thing. Especially when you're a beginner. There is a uh, law called Hicks Law. And Hicks Law says that the more choices you have to make, uh, the slower reaction time is going to be because you have to decide if you have to make a decision and then what decision uh, to make. And it's, it's kind of like when you have an old computer. If you have 20 programs open, your computer runs a lot slower. Um, and so when you are first learning uh, judo moves, jiu-jitsu moves, it's best to learn it kind of in a static and a, a a, a foreseeable environment. Now, if you're working with a dummy, you know that the dummy's not going to make any erratic moves. If you're working at your home, you don't have to worry about, you know, extraneous details and stuff like that. And I would recommend when you first, you know, start jujitsu to work with the dummy um, because then you can commit the moves to muscle memory. And then when you actually maybe decide, I'd like to go to a real jujitsu club or something, you already know these moves, you know, committed to muscle memory, and that, you know, frees up a little bit of more of your CPU to now have to make decisions, you know, because obviously when you're working with a real partner, 
then you have to think about distance and timing and speed and that kind of thing. Um, things that you don't have to worry about when you have a, you know, dummy. So, uh, as much as you may say, ah, this isn't realistic. My dummy, you know, my, my real partner isn't going to just be sitting there. I think it's best to learn the moves, you know, commit them to muscle memory. And then, of course, you know, you can test yourself with a real human later on. Well, I do appreciate you joining me here for oh, this 50th episode, especially uh, a judo move. Now, I want to thank a friend of mine who's like a five-time world champion and also former Olympian, uh, Kathy Hubble, who uh, gave me some good pointers. And obviously, if I you know, made any mistakes, those mistakes are mine. So I appreciate uh, Kathy's input and uh, looking forward to you know, sharing another episode with you next week. Until then, thank you again for joining me for this episode of Jiu-Jitsu for Dummies.